stuff is. It's good fun. Stand by. Firing. It is the largest ammunition depot in Western Europe. It all comes back to us for us to store, maintain and subsequently send for disposal. We have exclusive behind-the-scenes access to the base, which stores more than 60% of the MOD's munitions. There's real-time safety here, and the next time that these personnel might be conducting this duty could be on an operational theatre. We'll be using the de detonated demolition L2A1, so electric debt. Safety precautions to be observed. Controlled articles confirm now that you've all decontrabanded at the gate. It's 11 a.m. and Sergeant Johnson is preparing his team for a day of controlled explosions. Their task to destroy out-of-date and out-of-service munitions. The ammunition we're disposing of is bar mines, which are an anti-tank weapon. They're not used anymore. Mines are an indiscriminate weapon, so they're something that the British Army is certainly moving away from. They were designed to be anti-tank. They were laid in tracks, so the track of a tank would go over the top and initiate it. Um, they've also been repurposed in other ways. They're quite good for compound entry against the wall of a, of a building. They make a nice hole. Taking sandbags over from a uh, pallet behind us to one of the uh, pits here to prepare a detonation of uh, unserviceable explosives. The idea with the sandbags is they absorb the majority of the detonation and reduce the particle uh, velocity from quite a dangerous level, something a lot slower and a lot more spectacular. So how far would all the debris go if you, if you didn't put the sandbags in? Uh, they breached the range of our safe limit zone, which is several hundred metres. The area is under strict controls. All electrical equipment is banned. No phones, smart watches or even some parts of our camera equipment. Anything that could risk setting off the explosives. We hope that all the explosives we're using are going to initiate. Otherwise, we have, a, we have a safe waiting period inside the shelter and then it's a one-man risk. Somebody comes and checks what the issue was and resets everything. Now that the area is prepared, everyone is evacuated before there is one final safety check. We all retreat to a shelter a safe distance away. All they can do now is detonate and hope that all goes to plan. Quiet. Stand by. Flying. This is uh, the second explosion of the day. It's left a pit about half a metre to a metre deep, mm. and that was from around about four to five kilograms of explosives. The team now needs to prepare for a second round of explosions. Good. This military base has been operating for nearly 80 years and we've been given these never-before-seen pictures of its history over the decades. This site was established in 1942 in preparation for the D-Day landings. Ever since then, it has been an important site um, in terms of storage of munitions to support defence, training and operations both in the UK and globally. What is quite humbling and inspiring at times is when you talk to some of the staff here and you realise that some of them were supporting operations such as the Falklands War in the early 80s, Northern Ireland clearly for years and years, Afghanistan and Iraq, the um, Bosnia, Kosovo, anything at all that you can think of. As I say, it's highly likely that stock has come from this site. The base holds in excess of two billion pounds worth of stock. And this is the first time they've opened their doors for us to take a look inside. Awesome. 
missiles are serviced and disposed of on site, and we're about to see the parts that make up a paveway for precision guided bomb. So here, Sean, we've got um, three of the four main components of a paveway four weapon system. Um, the paveway four uh, is the most modern series of the paveway weapon systems. Uh, it was introduced into service in November 2008. Originally on the Harrier aircraft, it then transitioned over to the Tornado and it's currently operated on uh, the Typhoon and trials have begun on the F-35 Lightning II. It is incredibly rare, isn't it, to see all the component parts Absolutely, up close. Absolutely, yeah. uh, So here we've got the Enhanced Computer Control Group. Um, because the Paveway 4 is a free fall bomb, it's also referred to as a smart bomb, and this is essentially the brains. Okay. Uh, so this is the seeker head, um, the seeker part being this bit here. Mm -hmm. um, it contains nitrogen, because when it's um, fully prepped, it would have cannons fitted. And essentially the nitrogen is used to manoeuvre the bomb during its freefall onto its target. Uh, over here uh, we do have a practice warhead, um, hence the blue colour. Um, it would normally be grey with a, a big yellow band on the front to say that it's high explosive. I was going to say, it's definitely in inert. Yeah, this absolutely, one. yeah. Um, so it's a 500 pound warhead, which equates to about 222 kilograms. Um, an operational warhead would contain 85 grams of PBXN 109, which is the explosive filling. Um, so the enhanced computer control group would normally be fitted to the front of the bomb. Okay. And I said the hardback would run along the top with a fuse would be fitted in the rear. How uh, much is one of these worth? Um, so 2014 stats say a completed weapon was around £70,000. Okay, right. Um, so if I get my colleague, uh, I've got SSC Callum Blake here, mm -hmm. he will remove the cover for the fuse pocket, just to give you an idea of where the fuse would go. This is what we call the fuse pocket and the fuse would normally be situated in that pocket. And when we're servicing, we would check for damage, so it's primarily a visual inspection. Mm -hmm. We'd make sure that all the protective um, equipment is fitted. Um, and most importantly, uh, we would check the seek head itself. Um, it is prone to cracking and frosting, um, which would render it unserviceable. Uh, so this particular enhanced computer control group has been here for, since 2013, and it was last used in um, Operation Herrick and it's flown for a uh, total flying hours of 97 hours, 20 minutes. Our special access allows us to film inside the nerve centre of the base. Grass covers hundreds of explosive storage houses, acting as a protective layer if the worst happened and the explosives stored inside were set off. We're in the middle of one of the two ammunition uh, depots we've got on site and we've got a couple of hundred of these style of ammunition storage uh, buildings that you can see in front of us. Um, quite privileged to be in here because up till now usually cameras aren't allowed in this area because it's a restricted area due to the hazard uh, associated with the material that we store on site. If you'd like to have a look inside the, the building that's open to our side now, you can go and have a look at see what it's like inside one of these store sheds. Okay, great. Good. The contents of this building is worth about 2.8 million, which uh, to some people, it will seem quite a lot of uh, money, and yes, it is. Unfortunately, this uh, stock here is at now at the end of its service life, so it's going to be sent for disposal. We've got a rather large quantity of smoke grenades here. Those are going to be sent for uh, contractor disposal because they've reached the end of their five-year lifespan. doesn't seem like a fat lot of time to uh, some people, I appreciate, but pyrotechnic items do tend to degrade at a faster rate as opposed to uh, high-explosive items. Back at the demolition ground and the team are nearly ready to start the second round of their explosions. We've also disposed of dog training kits today. So these kits are our live explosives. They're used to train the search dogs so that they can uh, identify the smell of explosives. But because they are explosives, they also have a shelf life and they've come to the end of that. We're disposing of them today. So all it is is just a couple of sample pots of different explosives for the dogs to sniff out. So they'll just put them around and then the dogs will try and find them, sniff them out. And then if you can just start putting like a sandbag wall just around the outside of that now. Well, now that the guys have prepped all four of the pits, uh, they've actually decided to let me explode the first one of the afternoon. So I've just been given a briefing on what I need to do by Corporal Fisher. I just need to prime the device here by pressing and holding and when we see the red light that's when it will be ready to go. Okay. okay. Quiet. Stand by. Firing. 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 
Is this the only way to dispose of things like this? There are other methods, but this is the most effective. Some of this ammunition isn't allowed to be transported on the roads anymore, and so we can't get it off site to uh, civilian contractors. We can also burn explosives, but it takes longer. It's, uh, it's not necessarily as easy to do. Plus the benefit of having the demolition site on, on Kyneton Station is that we can also train our troops. This is great continuation training for what they will be doing in operations and what they do in the explosive ordnance disposal world in the UK and overseas. Defence Munitions Kyneton is vital for the Ministry of Defence. Its munitions experts will continue to be relied upon across the Army, the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force. Flying. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.